396 and it's got the 780, 780 Holly. Well, it's kind of a mixture of building a motorcycle comprised of a lot of car parts along with the leftover Harley Davidson parts and Honda. But it's off. And I built these little horns here to kind of smooth it out like something was missing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Northern Tin, the old car show where we explore all kinds of old cars. I'm your host, Kevin Edwards. Today I have an interesting show for you as we first will go visit an old friend of mine, Todd Theobald, to check out his 67 Camaros. For one Camaro, we will inspect the front subframe which is complete and waiting installation. We will also take a look at the 375 horsepower 396 engine which is ready for installation. And we will take a peek inside his barn out back where his finished 67 Camaro waits out the winter. For something different, we will go visit Merle Gallant's garage, and he is one of the leaders of the local car club called Northern Tin, from which the name of this show was adopted. Merle is in the process of building a motorcycle from scratch. It is a unique composition of different kinds of parts, and when it's complete, it will have several old car parts on it. Then for our final segment of the show I call, Where Are They Now?, we'll go back and visit Leo Whitman who is building a hot rod which was very near completion in our previous show. It is now complete, so we'll go back and see how it turned out. Like most avid street riders, Leo has started another project and we will take a look at that too. All that and a few extras are in store for you in today's show. Well, it is getting dark out here, but it's never too late to visit an old friend and look over his muscle cars. So let's go on in and check it out. You are Todd Theobald. Actually, this is an old yeah. friend of mine who's into muscle cars, mm -hmm. and he's invited us to come take a look at his cars. So that's what we're going to do today. What is this? Okay, right here we have a subframe for 67 RSSS Camaro. Um, just kind of getting close to... Uh, getting about ready to lay it down and just finished up uh, doing the brake work uh, today on it. I still have the steel lines to put on it, but uh, I got as far as the brake hose is done. But uh, this is a, uh, uh, got the four piston caliper uh, option on this. Uh, Let's take a look. This is over here. Yep, right here. These are the four pistons. You can see them sticking out there and um, they're available and on a lot of the Corvettes. Um, had them and then uh, uh, 67 Camaros. Uh, there was some 68s that had them, but yeah, nice option, nice option to have. Got uh, went through some pretty great lengths just trying to get all the correct, uh, all the correct hardware, all the bolts uh, with all the correct plating on it, and uh, that's probably uh, one of the hardest things. Uh, trying to restore a Camaro back to original is probably three times harder than it is to just put it together however you want it. Uh, bolt underneath the body and uh, one of the mounting pads is right here and the other one is back a couple feet and then uh, then once the front end is once the fenders and radiator support is all uh, put together then the other the third mounting point would be up towards the front so there's a rubber bushing there and then in the two points in the body. Lighting there, I can actually almost see the color of the car here. Let's see what it looks like if we clean it up a little bit. That's pretty dull. But you can see the original color, original color which is Royal Plum. Royal Plum? Yeah. It was offered just for a few months in 1967 only. In a brown. 
Actually, it's been painted a couple times. It was painted black. I think it was black once and brown once. And okay. So this is the motor that's going in the car? Yep, this is 375 horse, 396. And it's got the 780, 780 Holly. It's GM carburetor. It's not the exact one that matches this motor, but it is uh, got the GM numbers on it and stuff. Uh, I'm currently looking for uh, the correct one. So but, uh, tell us about why is it a 396 for the 375 horsepower? Well, the factory rated them at 375 horse, and uh, they, in 67 they made a, a 325 horse, 396, which was the lower horse, and then they made uh, a 375 horse, which is the high performance one. And there's a big difference between uh, the 325 horse and the 375 horse. Uh, the 375 horse has aluminum intake, 780 holly, um, comes uh, factory with uh, uh, steel crank, four bolt main, uh, solid lift cam. Uh, the heads, the heads are killer heads, rectangular port uh, heads, or some people call them square port heads. Other than, uh, basically everything's factory in here, other than I put, uh, I put the roller rockers. If I can get this off here. I did put roller rockers in there. I put just a little heavier spring. And I got the got the same cam in it, the correct Plus, cam. Roller rocker is different from a regular rocker. Yep, roller rockers. You, you have a little tip here that's got a ball bearing in it, and then there's also a ball bearing here. So when it pivots, it uh, there's less less friction when it pivots. So it just makes it easy. It takes less energy. Don't take near as much energy to tip it. And gives it just a little more horsepower, but it's actually better on your your guides. Um, typically, your uh, regular rocker, when it's pushing down, it can move when your when your valve, when it's when it's pivoting, it'll actually push your push your valve one way or the other, where that roller will allow it to tip on the top of your valve, so it'll move with it. So as that's tipping, it'll actually move back and forth, you know, as it's going up and down. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Tell us about this. What did I see in the back wall? You have gas pumps everywhere. Gas pumps, yeah, we got a few of those. Um, How long have you been collecting those? Oh, geez, it's probably been probably about nine years, probably about nine years, somewhere in there. This gas pump here, this is my father-in-law's. I probably should point to be this pump here. It would be uh, my father-in-law's. I'd actually pumped gas out of this. If you uh, run the handle, you can still hear the compression. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'd actually pump gas out of that thing probably about 15 years ago. Kevin, why don't you come on in and I'll show you what I got in the barn here. I got a couple more Camaros sitting in here. Wow. 67 RSSS and that one there is a 68 SS. What we got here? Yep, what do you got here? This is a 67 RS. It's got uh, 210 horse, 327. There ain't many of them you see out there that have the original interior yet in it. And we do drive this quite a bit. And where did you find it? Ham Lake, Minnesota. Just yeah. for sale on the paper? Or? It was for sale on the paper. Me and the boy, uh, we were up at Back to the 50s car show. And uh, we seen this in the paper and went and took a look at it and ended up buying it from a gal. Her husband had passed away. He was, uh, he was working on it and he was a body man. And, he passed away during the project, so we picked it up and finished it up. And we've always thought about taking it back there and showing it to her, but. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Did you do this car too? Yep. Did the whole thing from the ground up. Um, as soon as I got done, my wife said it was hers, though. So <laughs> all that work was for nothing. Smart wife. <laughs> Does she let it's, you drive it? Yeah, and she lets me work on it too. I know it. It is nice. Well, All right. Well, thanks for showing us your cars. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming over. Stop by anytime you want, Kevin. Thank you. Well, that was fun. It's always a good time to see an old friend and his toys. Now it is off to Merle Gallants to see a unique motorcycle which he is building. It will have a variety of old car parts on it. We first have to work our way around an old car to get to the cycle in the back room, 
but it'll be well worth the trip. We're at Merle Gallon's house and he's an avid street rod person, but today he's got something a little different to show us. And what do you have here, Merle? Well, it's kind of a mixture. I'm, I'm building a motorcycle comprised of a lot of car parts, along with uh, leftover Harley Davidson parts and Honda and so forth. But it's a Ford engine, 37 to 40 Ford V860 engine in it. Uh, the frame is pretty much custom built, other than the front half, which is a Goldwing Honda. Rear suspension is a Harley Davidson soft tail. Uh, there's an old Harley Davidson 45 military seat on it. Mm -hmm. Headers are all hand built. Got some different shocks on the seat though here, huh? Yeah, I've added a, a mountain bike gas shock in the center. My kids are both into bicycles, so they're uh -huh. helping me out with parts. Okay. A lot of recycled parts. Uh, probably the hardest part of the whole thing was finding pieces for this engine. The, the big flatheads you can purchase anything for. They, mm -hmm. they, they build everything for them, but the V860s, nobody makes anything internal. Oh, really? So it's all new old stock parts mm -hmm. inside. So how many different engines do you think are in there then? Well, by the time I found enough pieces to do one, I ended up with seven engines. Oh, really? And I've, okay. I've since sold them off, but uh -huh. I kept a spare. I've got enough to build one complete extra engine now. Okay. Now back up one more time about the frame. So you, what part is from the motorcycle and what part did you custom make? Okay, from about here forward is mm -hmm. Goldwing Honda. Okay. I started with so a... So all this bracket here and... Yeah, the front, okay. of, front of the frame from here up and forward and the front fork is, is Goldwing Honda. Okay. I started with a complete Goldwing. I bought just a parts bike, yeah. built this jig to mount it on. I put the Goldwing frame on here and got everything centered and located the way I wanted. And then I welded the frame to the stand. Then I cut the frame, the rear half of the frame off and discarded it. Oh, okay. Initially I started with a lot more of the frame. I was going to try to use more of it, but it, dimensions just weren't right. So I cut the rest off, discarded that, and bent up new tubing and built all the cross members and so forth. And, and this is a little longer, isn't it, than a regular motorcycle? Or it looks longer anyway in this position, maybe not. But the, the wheelbase is approximately six inches longer than the longest stock Harley Davidson. Uh, Weight-wise, when it's done, it should be right on about 700 pounds. Uh, I'm kind of modeling it after uh, there's an individual down in, I believe, Illinois that builds them and sells them, and that's what his are, about 700 pounds. And he's, it's a similar bike. He uses a 750 Honda as a starting point. This worked a little better with the Goldwing because they were already a water-cooled bike. So they had a radiator, and the frame was wider on top and so forth. And these are some air cooling fins on this? Is that what this is? Those are my upper radiator hoses. These are made out of, uh, they're aluminum extrusion. I hope to gain a little bit more cooling with them. They're originally made for uh, transmission coolers. Okay. I, I bought some of the tubing in bulk. I've got to do some more welding to, to mate everything up here. But. So does it have the rubber tubing run through there? It no. is the tubing. It is the tubing. This is the tubing. I've okay. got to weld a piece on the end to mate the rubber too yet. Okay, to connect that. Okay. Yep. I had intended on putting some lower ones on the same way, but I don't, just don't have enough space in here. It would be too much work to, for the gain. The uh, actual radiator came off a NASCAR race truck. It's an oil cooler off a NASCAR truck. Which, running the engine on the stand, I ran it with this cooler and it seemed to work all right. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, that's going to work. Uh, the headers are uh, all stainless steel. I've got to finish, finish the welding on the pipes and then polish them before I weld the collectors on. So, that should give it kind of a unique sound. Okay, yeah. These, uh, the stainless tubing itself is the handrails out of a Metro Transit bus. Really? <laughs> I buy a lot, of, a lot of stuff from the recycler, so. Well, let me see. Oh, yeah, that works good. I can step right up. <laughs> That's why it's so shiny, just from hands. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of, tons of hand fabrication on it. That's creative. And tell me about this piece looks a little different, too. Where are all the holes from? Did it come with a piece like that? Or did no, you that's a, it's a piece I made. Okay. Uh, I had to made it up to this, the rear suspension piece, this black piece is a... Uh, 
Honda or Honda Harley Davidson soft tail, which uh, it's a swap meet part. When the guys build the bigger Harley Davidsons and put the wide tires on them, they've got to change the rear suspension. So these are fairly easy to come by at swap meets. Okay. I initially was going to build a hardtail bike with no rear suspension. So I bought this piece with the intention of using just this casting on the end and mating it up to my frame. Mm -hmm. But after I bought this, this whole rear triangle, all the hard work was done to, to make suspension on it. So, so you went ahead. I went ahead and did that. I, okay. It's got Harley Davidson, the, the lower shock spring units are also Harley. I had to relocate them under there. But Uh, I've got to build a battery box for it yet. That's what this big hole in here is for yet. Okay. It's going to be a stainless box with a battery in it. Uh, the seat is all mounted on an aluminum frame because this has to be removable to get the battery down in through the frame. Okay. Yeah. And I couldn't locate the cross members properly to hang the seat on it without having some kind of a base plate under it. I initially set the engine up with a uh, Ford Escort carburetor which is a two barrel progressive Weber, but it was too tall. The carburetor stood about this high. Uh, I since purchased a late model Harley Davidson carburetor and put a right angle adapter on here to get the height down so my tanks will cover it up. Okay. I'm gonna use uh, some late model Indian tanks and modify them to fit, and then there'll be a console in the center with the speedometer and so forth in it. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, kind of experimentally and I hope I can make it run with that on it. Yeah. Oh, you haven't run it with that yet? Not with this carburetor. Okay. I ran it with the Escort carburetor. Like I say, the engine's got three or four hours on it on a test stand just to make sure everything worked good. It must have made you feel kind of excited the day that turned over, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I say, that was a big project. That was a oh, upwards of two years just finding parts and building the engine. And the bus railing didn't come off when you ran it? No. Okay. Well, I didn't run it with, I didn't have these headers oh, at the just, time. Oh. I'm not done welding them. I just had uh, the, the original cast iron manifolds on here. So it's going to have a complete different sound than what it had the, uh, just the cast iron manifolds. Okay, what color did you say it's going to be? Pretty much all black. All black. Uh, like I say, I'm going to use uh, more Ford parts yet. I've got a pair of 37 Ford taillights. There's going to be one on either side in here. I'm going to put a 40 Ford taillight in the rear fender. That chevron shaped taillight. Okay. So it'll have all Ford taillights. I've got a pair of uh, Ford script fog lamps. Small fog lamps. I'm going to mount one of those on either side plus a, excuse me, a 30, I believe it's a 35 Ford headlight. So it's going to have a lot of Ford stuff on it. Yeah. Inter intermixed with a lot of Harley Davidson. So. A new breed is born, huh? Yeah. And then uh, I think you were telling me earlier this is one of the mini models. Oh, okay. it's not black, but. Yeah. A friend of mine bought this for me. This is a, a similar bike that I believe was. Uh, I've, I've seen pictures of this bike actually built, and this one was built out of a Moto Guzzi. So it was a little longer yet because it had a full transmission and such in it. You can see by the length of the handlebars, they're just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing it completed. <laughs> Not as much as I. <laughs> now, let's go over to Leo Whitman's and see what he has in store for us. Uh, we're back at Leo Whitman's house. Um, earlier, he showed us that this car as he was putting it together. And we didn't have a chance to see the final car put together, but now it is. So um, why don't you refresh our memory, tell us what the car is and what you've done with it. Okay. Well, first of all, it's a 41 Plymouth Coupe. Uh, I worked on it five and a half years. I uh, made a few modifications here and there. Uh, I guess we could probably start up at the front here. And I got Edelbrock carburetor on it. And that's stainless steel on the firewall, polished stainless and uh, the hood hinges are chrome plated and the front end here some of this is some of this is chrome and some of it's stainless uh, kind of cover up the radiator cap 40 DeSoto front bumper on it so it was kind of shaped more like the front of the car and then I Frenched in uh, Chrysler Cordoba headlights and parking light 
and uh, all the stainless trim was uh, taken off and straightened out and repolished. And I uh, took the hood ornament off. Uh, getting back this way, I v butted the windshield, as you can see, took the chrome piece out of there, and it's just actually uh, glued together in the center. Uh, down here, I took the running boards off, and I built these little horns here to kind of smooth it out so it didn't look like something was missing. The door handles are gone, and they're electric doors. And uh, on the inside here, you can see I have the, uh, like the ship for my door pulls, which is a, a replica, or I call it the Mayflower, because the Mayflower was a symbol of the Plymouth cars. And uh, my seats are out of a Ford Explorer, 97 Ford Explorer. And uh, the column as I did it from uh, aftermarket. And the wheel is a Lacaron wheel. And uh, I wood grained all the, the dash and the garnish moldings. And I put aftermarket uh, cockpit uh, royal gauges in there. Okay, I got the, this is the original back bumper. I just moved it in real close to the car. And uh, these are Hudson taillights, 4950 Hudson taillights. And I uh, Frenched them in and uh, just kind of matched the front. And this is my antenna button up there. And there's the third member brake light. It's connected. So there's the, the trunk, my sign telling what all we did to it. I keep all my cleaning supplies and the battery in here. As I can give you a quick look, it doesn't look too pretty, but uh, that keeps everything out of my trunk then when we're at a car show or whatever, and uh, get that, keep that clean look. Well, thanks for showing us your car again. It, uh looks very nice and it's good to see it all put together. <laughs> well, I uh, want to thank you for coming out because it's always, a, it's always a pleasure to show your car to somebody. You know, that's what we build them for, to show them and drive them. And uh, we've had a lot of fun with this car now for the last two summers. A lot of fun. And then you tell me you've got another car project started. I'm working on a 62 Thunderbird. I've been working on that since March. Okay. And that's still in in the raw stages, but it takes a while. So can we take some time to go over and take a look at that too? We sure can. Okay. Uh, Dick, this is well, this got is a little a, ways to go. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a long ways to go, but uh, it's uh, slow but sure. I keep pecking away at it, and uh, I've been uh, trying to get rid of the rust. And um, <clears throat> under here, this is under that quarter that's cut off all the way. And I've got a little more rebuilding to do of the inner fender panel, and then I'll uh, I'll weld that on. And then I got to go to the other side because the other rear quarter's laying here, and uh, I'm just gonna more or less say uh, put it back. It's not going to be a lot of changes. Uh, they're a pretty smooth car. I'm going to fill them holes up there, and there won't be any Thunderbird insignias on the outside of it. It'll be all smooth. Oh, you what can is see, that? This is this is what the grill looked like originally. This is uh, this is the what the grill was like originally, and I this is the grill that was in it. I changed it. There's 113 uh, three quarter by seven eighths acorn nuts. And they're all chrome, and then each one of these little holes, these were drilled for the to bolt them on. Gas pump. How old is that? That's a 1920s vintage. I bought a, I think it was a 22 or a 26. Well, see, this is how you pump the gas up in here. Oh, up into the glass yeah. dome? There's a double piston pump in there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, every stroke like that would probably put at least a, a quart, maybe two quarts of gas in the cylinder. Okay. And uh, then when you got that full, why well, uh, you took the hose down and let it uh, gravity fill into your car.
Well, that is it for today's episode of Northern Tin. I hope you enjoyed exploring the garages with the old cars in them. It certainly was fun for me talking with all the owners and seeing what old car projects they have been working on. I certainly want to thank each of the owners who allowed us to come into their garages to check out their cool wheels and other related stuff. So until next time, keep those old cars are rolling along. All right, well, thanks for showing us your cars. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming over. Stop by anytime you want, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>